Hello and welcome back to the fourth episode of Muslim Perspective History with me, Yahya. Last episode, we saw the rise of the King Raikuch and the downfall of the original King Raisashi. As you may be thinking, hold up, this is not very Islamic, but I tell you now, we have to give context before the main show, Muhammad bin Qasim shows, and you will see that when the story goes on and on and on, you will start to see threads of plot points getting connected from all different directions. So on this episode, I want to concentrate on both sides. So what is happening in the Islamical world and what is happening in Sindh at the time. And what is happening in Sindh is the rise of the King Kutch and his devious queen. And you will also see that there will be plot points between the two stories which are interconnected and you will see that things are moving from the side of Hijaz and uh, the Meccan area and also from the side of Sindh where the newly appointed Kutch is residing. So without further ado, let us go back to the story. <sighs> Morning, my love. Mm. It feels like a dream, what happened yesterday. But we have truly triumphed. Mm. Mm. I believe there's more trials ahead. I think uh, you're thinking way too ahead. Uh, Is it morning already? Yes. Yes, my queen. And the rising of the sun of our new kingdom. Don't get ahead of yourself, Kutch. There are people bound to get you back for what you did to the King Raisashi. There are great many trials ahead of you and ones that will be easy and some that will be very difficult, some that will come through the court themselves (laughs) and ones that will come from external. (sighs) My Queen, may I just enjoy the moment for now? Please go ahead, lives are full of moments. Thank you, Queen. I shall truly savour this moment. Oh, my dear Kutch, there's much work to be done. You will see. Sire, may I enter? Your breakfast is ready. You may enter. Come inside. Come, my Queen, let us eat. I'm so hungry right now. Okay, Kutch. Sire, Sire, I have an urgent message by the King of Mahart. The message says, Oh you bastard Kutch, killer of the rightful king Raisashi, I challenge you and I will defeat you in battle and I will take my rightful space as king of this great land. Surrender now and I will treat you fairly and don't and I will put your head on a spike. Thus I declare it to be so, King Maharat, controller of all the domains in this kingdom. Have you sent the message to that bastard Kutch? Yes, I have, my lord. That bastard Kutch won't get away with this. 
the true king was Raisashi, and me, his relation, blood relation, I will tear his face and I will grind his flesh against the ground. Prepare the horses, we are going to battle right now. <laughs> Damn it! What am I supposed to do? I have no military experience. And this king has loads of military experience. What the hell am I supposed to do? Sire, calm down. That bastard Marat is going after my head. How can I be calm at this time? Calm down, my dear Kutch. Oh, my queen, what can I do for you? My dear Kutch, prepare your horses and your cavalry. You are going to war. If you do not pass this test, then I fear that your reign will end here fast as it came. It will go. I'm sorry to tell you this, my dear Kutch. You need to pass this test. I cannot help you. Oh, you soldier, what do you suggest I do? Thank the gods, we have a very strong defensive position here in our capital city. We may be able to hold a siege for at least a couple of months. A couple of months? I can't last that long. I don't have the mental fortitude for that. We need a quick and fast victory, my dear soldier. Then you will have to lead them yourself, sire. There's no other way. Like I said, I don't know. I don't know what to do in battle. I'm just a Brahmin. I just read books. It's not my nature to fight. L look at me, Kutch. My dear Kutch, look at me. Do you want me to fight a woman? No. No, my dear. I will do it. For our love. And for, si and for the sake of my progeny. Good. Good, my dear Kutch. All you soldiers, prepare for battle. We will take this King Maharat and hang him from his loins. Yes, my sire, we shall prepare at once. Sire! Sire! The army is here! The army is here! Prepare for battle! My queen! My queen, they're here! I don't know what to do! I, I said all those things out of bravado. Uh, please, please help me, my queen. I don't know. I, I've never held a sword in my life. I don't know what to do. Calm down, Kutch. Calm down. Like I said before, do you want me to fight a woman who sits behind her veil and prays for you? Do you want me to put the armor that you have placed upon yourself? Go and fight. Go and defend my honor and your kingdom. Yes, my queen, I will do it for us. I will fight to the bitter end. So you showed yourself, Kutch. Damn you, Maratha. I will kill you if it's the last thing that I do. Sure, sure. Sure, sure, Kutch. Come at me. King Marta, I demand one-on-one -on -one combat. <laughs> okay then, come at me. But by foot, not on horses. I agree to your terms. Now let's fight.
No, wait, wait, Kutch, Kutch, you told me that you're gonna have a fair fight. No, no, Kutch. You bastard, Kutch. Who said I'm gonna fight fair, you bastard? Yes! We are the winners! No one will take me on now. We take it on. We win. Sire, the army's retreating. We've won. My queen, my queen, we've won, we've won. Calm down, Kutch, I know this is a great time. This is a great time for celebration. Whilst you were fighting, I heard from one of our astronomers that we should get married. The planets have aligned for us that we will have a great kingdom and our marriage will be one of fruitfulness. This is, this is a, a surprise, my queen. I will do it. I will do it. For this victory has taught me nothing is permanent. We must do what we must do to achieve our own happiness. Saumangalya Prarthana Mangala Mangalye Shive Sarvacha Sadhike Sharange Priyambike Gauri We are hereby gathered today to witness the marriage of Kutch Brahman and Queen Suhandi. Do you two accept each other as married couples? in front of the universe. We do. I believe that's a good place to stop for now in the terms of the story of India. Let's go back to Hijaz and see what's going on from the Islamical point of view during this time period of the rise of Kutch. Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I have a report from the, from the field. Would you like to listen? Go ahead, my brother. The first report is from the Maghrib. We have successfully entered and gone past the, the Berber territory and we've reached the sea from that point of view. Mashallah, mashallah. If there is land beyond that sea, we shall conquer that as well and show the people the beauty of Islam. And we have a report from the area of Sham. We have gone past the Persian territory and fully conquered the areas of of what Rushdom used to control. Uh, we don't know what's beyond that. Um, the next country that we can see is the Qing, the land of the Qing. Oh, have we sent them the Dawah to the Emperor of Qing? Yes, yes we have. We did it a couple of years ago. He responded by saying that we will never be conquered if we follow in the path that we have chosen. Go on. But he didn't accept Islam. Mm. I see. Why do you think? Ya Amir, you know best. I am just a humble servant. Listen here, lad. 
When the Prophet gave Dawah to the people of Quraysh, there were certain factors in which people didn't accept straight away. And these can be broken up into certain categories. Firstly, loss of wealth. Secondly, loss of prestige. Thirdly, loss of social status. And fourthly, business. Fifth, is the respect of the family. These are the main criteria in which people rejected Islam during the blessed time of Prophet Muhammad. Hidayah is in the hands of Allah. We have no control over it. If it was up to our blessed Prophet, Abu Talib would have been a, a follower of Islam. But as it says, we plan and you plan and you are the best of planners. Ya Amir, there's one last thing on the report. It seems like the Thakafi tribe has gone far and beyond our expectation in going in forward into Sham. It seems like they've had certain skirmishes with the Ching as well. Hmm. God has blessed the Thakafi tribe. Let me tell you a story, son. When the Prophet became slightly despondent with the people of Mecca, he chose another town to preach Islam to, and that was the town of Taif. He spent a number of days there, and no one accepted Islam. Yet, saying that, they did something far worse. They berated him, and threw rocks at him, and jeered, and screamed, and swore at him for a number of miles, until the blessed body of Muhammad وسلم, was covered in blood so much so that his sandals stuck to his feet with his blood our blessed prophet he did not curse them or jeer at them back but he made dua for them that such a dua that it would bring tears to your eyes but shortly he mentions that due to his own weaknesses that he could not bring these people to the true faith and someday their progeny will accept Islam if they are not going to accept themselves Wow Amir only a prophet could make such a dua for people who berated him and swore at him gosh only a prophet could do that yes my son If the Prophet was to see us now, he would be grieved, much grieved. Why is that? Islam has spread far and wide to the furthest point of the Maghrib and to the Qing dynasty. I think my Prophet would be proud of that. No, my son. My Prophet and your Prophet preach unity amongst all. He would be heart-stricken if we were to see our condition now that we are fighting amongst ourselves over worldly things his struggle and striving was for eternity and yet we are still fighting and bickering over something that's temporary may God forgive us all enough about that son do you have the list of people who are ju what is it no, oh, it's it's nothing. It's, it's very profound what you've told me. Oh, if you sat in the company of the Prophet, you would have been in awe all the time. Let me hear the list of people who are ready to join us in the next battle. It pains me that we have to go through this. I see. Okay. Hmm. Who's this Hajjaj bin Yusuf? He's from the Thakafi tribe in Taif. Um, he's a teacher for children and adults for the fiqh of Islam. Hmm. Why would he want to join a battle like this? <sighs> it's fine. I prove it. 
Make sure the army is ready in the next two to three days. We will ride out from then. Yes, Amir. Now, I have different issues I must attend to. Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Keep praying, keep praying Let me hear your sabak Alhamdulillah Why are you praying like an ajam? If you don't know your lesson The whole class will be punished because of you Ustad, I'm Trying my best. Your best is not good enough. Try harder. I have a message for Hajjaj bin Yusuf. You have been selected to go out in the path of Allah. Ah, finally, I can get rid of these damn kids. Time for me to get ready and leave these kids. There's someone else's problem now. Let us go back. One last time before we end the episode to Kutch. Since we saw him in the last part of the episode, there's been a number of years have passed since then from that fateful battle and things are looking up for Kutch. Oh my king, did you ask for me? Yes. Come closer, Taki. Wazir Bareman. Take a seat. You know, Taki, I have been ruling this kingdom for some time now. With the wisdom of my queen and the wisdom of the Brahmin. And I have dispelled all insurrections that has come to my kingdom. I see, my king. Would you like to know the extent of your kingdom? Oh, please do tell, my dear Taki. Oh, my king, in all four cardinal directions, you reign supreme. And there is no one that will oppose you. There is no rebel or opponent that will face you. And all people bow their heads in your majesty and glory. I too bow my head. Long limb King Kutch. Oh my dear king, I would like to tell you a story of times of old. The older brother of the king that you killed was defeated by the armies of Fars. And the younger brother that you killed divided his kingdom into four parts with four governors to rule each part north, west, east and south. Hmm, I see. I see in your infinite wisdom that you have destroyed the regency system that your prior predecessor had set up and you have used your brother to take up some of the administrative duties of the kingdom I fear my lord that he is too young he is barely just a man but in your infinite wisdom I see things that you don't see and you see things that I don't see maybe I am mistaken O oh, Turkey, I warn you now that I abhor sycophancy and base frivolities bite your tongue and tell me the truth because I have been doing this longer than you have and I have been in the position that you are standing right now. So, if you must, speak your mind or get out. Uh, yes, my king. Yes, my king. I, my intention of coming today was to tell you about the boundaries of your kingdom and in which way we can improve. Yeah, yeah, Im improve. Hmm. I see. The only reason I've come is that Durar is enjoying the fruits of life a bit too much, my sire. And his ostentatiousness knows no bound. I know. I know. He is still young. And he will know and understand true power when the time is right. But for now, tell me. Yes, my king, you have one beautiful daughter and you have two sons. One that you named after your brother, Darar, 
and the other Dorasaya. I believe it is time that you teach them statehood. And for that reason that I have come here today in which to tell you the boundaries of your kingdom. I see from the west that your country and this kingdom reaches to the lands of the Tartars. And from the other side it reaches the river Bay to the fortified town of Babia which is a short journey to the fortified town of Iskander. And my dear Ducky, can you tell me, is there any kind of rebellion going on? No, my king, there is no rebellion. But I is apt of a humble servant like myself to tell you what is happening in your kingdom. Hmm, tell me more about this town of Babia. Well, he does slightly contest your kingship but he's a small time governor he just owns the land around Babia near the river oh there is rebellion in my kingdom that you failed to tell me uh, no my sire no no uh, it, it's it's only just a side note it's on the edge of your kingdom hmm We'll see about that. Nothing will contest my kingship. Ever. You hear this, Ducky? Ever. Yes, my king. I will see to it that this governor is disposed of. No. No, no, no. I will do this myself. First, I will need to consult the astrologers. To see which is the best day to come out. And then bring my army closer to him. Yes, yes. I will make it so to look like a royal visit from myself. He will have to accept me. Sire, my, my king, don't trouble yourself. I can do it for you if you want. No, there are some things a king must do himself. Leave me be. There is much preparation that needs to go ahead before I can uh, move out. Yes, my king. I shall take my leave now. Go, Taki. Make the necessary preparation. Yes, my king. Budeman, Budeman, has the necessary arrangements been made? Yes, my sire. Good. And the army is ready to go? Yes. Let us go. It's more than a day's journey from here to Babia to secure the kinship for generations to come. Let's move, men. My king, I pray for your safe return. We're here, men. Make the announcement. Open the gates. The king, Kutch, has come to your humble town, Babia, to seek an audience with the governor. This is going to be easy pickings. Let's move, soldiers. Yeah. Let us conclude for today the story of India from the eyes of the Muslims.
in the next episode, we're going to look at Hajjaj bin Yusuf and the rise of Hajjaj bin Yusuf and how it affects the story of Muhammad bin Qasim. Stay tuned for the next episode. Like every time, if you have any questions or queries, you can email us on muslimphistory at gmail.com. That's muslim, p for pepper, history.com. And if you feel like supporting us on this new project of ours, you can always go to patreon.com forward slash MP history. That's patreon.com forward slash M for mother, P for Peter, history. It would really help us out. There is a number of costs that comes with making a podcast. Firstly, is the cost of hosting the podcast. Secondly, we have a website on the way, and the website link will be muslimphistory.com, and that will be up in the next two to three weeks. Secondly, it will help us out in terms of buying research materials and books. Books cost money and we need a lot of books to research every episode that we make. And finally, it will help us out in terms of upgrading the show from what it is right now. We'll move from audio to video and we'll have a lot more content coming up. If people support us, we'll be able to get there faster. So I implore every one of you to go on patreon.com forward slash MP history. And once the website's up, you'll be able to contribute via PayPal. Thank you for listening for this episode of Muslim Perspective History. Hope to see you on the next episode.